Hello, this is Mike Lanier from Car Show Nationals. Well, dot com let's roll i can't even remember the name of my website holy cow uh we're here with website. jeff Thisted. yeah mike lanier, uh, jeff and Thisted. mike lanier and hot rodding legend von hot rod himself southern california local i am yes it's you and we're in we're, we're in your studio this is a rare glimpse studio. yes yeah you got a little teaser you got all kinds of fun stuff back there it's a welding helmet and some artwork up there okay nice. you 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 brought it up Tell me about the welding helmet. What's the story on that? Uh, the story of the welding helmet is I do um, art shows. I do a pinstripers reunion, and that was done at the reunion. I'll grab it. I'll, let me see the date. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. This date's yeah. super cool. This is awesome. Look at this. It is Ron Hot Rods Custom Culture Christmas 1995. So it was wow. at a Christmas show I did. It's an old school, old style welding helmet. Yeah, yeah. And that's where this is at. I always have a, a live auction that I do there, and I always buy one piece, and apparently that's what I bought in 96. <laughs> that's very cool. Now, is that an ornament in the, in the studio? Is that there for inspiration, memorabilia? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah I've got all kinds of stuff. As you can see around me, there's all kinds of artwork that I've collected through the years. There's some here from Japan, Germany, Australia, you know, from, from my Pinstripers reunion. I'm not sure what you can see. Uh, this one here is from 1998. I bought that at the Pinstriper Show in 1998. This one here is from Japan. Um, that's a collage of a bunch of different artists. So there's pieces all over the place. I mean, if you, if I would scroll different, you know, you can see a lamp. There's artwork all over the place. I love uh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool and so I, I was under the assumption that that's all your stuff, but it's not. That's that's memorabilia, and that's that's other artists throughout the years. Right, right. That's other artists in different shows, events that I've been to that I've collected that other artists are at, and I'll grab one piece from them, or we'll do a collage together. Some of them, the two color pinstripe designs back there. I did one color, somebody else did another color. So it's just something to add into my studio. And you can see on the roof, my roof is angled. And you can see artwork is making its way to the roof. Right above, if you look right here, there's a, there's a surfboard above me. Let's see if I can find it. You see it? Uh, oh, geez. Yeah. Oh. There's, a, there's a surfboard a on the roof. What's that? I see, the, I see the skateboard right above you. Yeah, there's a skateboard deck there. There's, there's about three or four of them inside of here. There's a lamp right, right. here. I, I, do, I, make these, I make these lamps. It's a header. And it's on a Krager wheel, an unmounted oh, Krager. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. That's so, super cool. Yeah, all kinds of stuff in here. Yeah, it's very so one of those for my uh, for my nephew for Christmas. I'm going to commission you. There you go. <laughs> tell me what you yeah. need. Tell me what he's into. As I go picking, I'll I'll pick out stuff and I'll sculpt something out for him in the stuff that he needs. You know, if very one guy cool. wanted a flathead in his, he's into flathead motors. So I built a flathead motor as a prop in front of his desk. It's got zoomy headers that come out. Off he has two carburetors on it, a big manifold. He he just mounted on his desk. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. That's so, fantastic. So, Vaughn, hot rod. Yeah. Um, I, I watched the – it was a while ago. Uh, you did a thing with Dennis Gage. I thought that was a great interview. Yeah. But he talked to you about how you started pinstriping and how all that came about. So I want to hear a little bit of that story again. Sure, sure, sure. I fell into pinstriping by total accident. I had a hot rod shop, as you know, called, you know, Hot Rods. I named it after me. And we were selling and buying cars and flipping them all the time. And the cars were always for sale. I just added pinstriping to the cars just to kick it one more level so it'd sell a lot easier. And I was striping cars and not telling anybody I was doing them. And then eventually what happened was I was striping in my showroom on a glass case, just doing some practicing. A customer walked in. And said, I don't know you did striping. I said, yeah, I do it all the time. He goes, why don't you stripe my 50 Merc? And I said, sure, no problem. So we negotiated a price. I said, the only catch is I need it Saturday, and I need it all day from 8, 8, 8 in the morning till 5 o'clock at night. And he dropped it off, and I striped one color, didn't like it, cleaned it off, striped the second color, forced it dry. So when I laid the second color, if I didn't like it, I could clean it off and wouldn't damage the first color. It literally took me all day. First paid commission. Never told the guy, and I saw the guy this year at SEMA, and to this day, he still doesn't know. His was the first commission paid gig that I did, and I never oh, come on. on. On a 50 yeah. cool. Merc? 50 Merc. Yeah. I did the hood, I did the hood, the dash, and uh, the trunk. Yeah, I never told him. 
There's a picture in my office. Where's the picture of this thing? There's a picture in my office that they use for SEMA for advertising, and it's a picture of me doing the dash of his Merc. Wow. Yeah. Is there a picture of the Merc on your Instagram, or where can I find a picture there of that Merc? There is not. No. There is not, because this is so far back, there wasn't anything digital. Yeah, everything was filmed. <laughs> All right, your mission, if you choose to accept it, I want you to post. <laughs> I want to see this Merc. I got to think for him. All right, the I'll, I'll see if I can find one. I know there's some, there's some that exist. I just got to find them. Okay. <laughs> Seeing that I have absolutely nothing to do. <laughs> he doesn't know to this day, so this is breaking news. This is an exclusive. A car is breaking right. exclusive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so first cool. One I, first one I did that I signed it, and he wanted a little caricature. So back then I used to do uh, a little drawing of my uh, 41 Ford, my Chop 41 Ford, with my hand coming out of the roof holding a pinstriping brush. So that design is at the end of the design on the trunk. It's a little hot rod car with me striping it. It's pretty cool. Very cool. That's now, how awesome. long ago was this? Oh, gosh. You're going to age me now. <laughs> 95, taking a guess. Yeah. Okay, so not the, a little while ago, not that long ago. Yeah. Well, that's a long for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all getting old. <laughs> Well, you know a friend of mine, possibly, uh, uh, Monty Roach. He's a Monty Minnesota is, kid. He's from Minnesota. Yeah, he's, I know Monty. So. <laughs> he's a great guy. I was at um, back to the 50s a long time ago, and this kid toted a wagon up to me and asked if, I, if I'd strike the handle of it, so I did. And lo and behold, that was Monty Roach back in the day. He says wow. he still has that wagon, too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, he is, uh, it's great to see some of you guys do your work, and I've watched Monty do some of his. It's just yeah. when he first started, he was pretty young, um, yeah. and he gets out to California. I know that. That's I know he goes out and uh, would be hanging out with uh, Barry, Barry McGuire, right. uh, yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah he's, he's a good, good kid. Yeah. I like him because he's really done the industry good as a young kid. He's really developed his craft. He's focused on it. And he's got the passion, and that's what I like. You know, most time people get in it, they want to ra raise cat, they want to do the good stuff, the big names, and do it all right away. And Monty is really, you know, taking it from learning a skill, developing a skill, marketing the skill, and developing a name for himself. And I, I think that's really, really a good way of doing it. I think he did amazingly how he did that. Yeah, it's pretty funny because I give him a hard time because he always goes out and hangs out Chip Foos, and I go. Oh. He's got to be, you know, having to go over there for a reason, not just, uh, he's like, you think? And I go, yeah, I bet you'll do one of his cars someday. That's what I told him. But he, he laughs every time I tell him that. Yeah, that's but, good. Uh, but you've, uh, you started out, you were building, uh, building cars before you pen, were pinstriping, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then absolutely. You had, you had some well-known cars that were yes. out? Yeah. Right. So tell us well, about know, some of those. Well, you know the uh, 41 Ford that I mentioned, it's a 41 Ford that we chopped 12 inches. There's 10% of the actual roof left. Gene Winfield did the roof for me. It's running a full race flat motor out of a 50 Merc on a LaSalle transmission with a seven inch body channel on it. And in 1997, we signed a contract with Mattel to make it a Hot Wheel. And you can no buy way. that Hot Wheel to this day. You can buy it at Target. It's called the Tail Dragger. But the, the tail original Dragger, Hot Wheel, that's yeah. I mean, I the original like Hot that. Wheel is purple. Yeah. The original Hot Wheels purple. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Look here, if you can see it. Here's one I got. Let me see if I can go on up. Can you see it? Oh, there you go. Oh okay. yeah. I have I to see I if we it. have that one. My son's got some Hot Wheels. There you go. There's another one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty I got cool. Some, I got some open packages here. That's why it's here. So. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah, that's I. As I say, that's my Barris custom. So we did a lot of work on that car, and it's when we did the Hot Wheels early on, before they started these, you know, how to get the SEMA car and stuff like that. So it mm -hmm. came out in 1998. The one I showed you is from 1998. That's the original. Where's that now? The car. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that somebody chased me for a year. He didn't put the name together with the car because when it got written up in magazines, they said hot rod, and he was thinking they were calling the car a hot rod. He chased it for a year, found out it was me, called me on the phone, offered me a price. I said, the car's not for sale. 
He says, oh, everything's for sale for the right price. Call me the next day. And I said, the car is really not for sale. So long story short, by the end of the week, he owned the car. So I sold it. <laughs> yeah. And he still has it? I don't know. Because he said, okay, uh, write me a note on how to start it. You'll have your money tomorrow. He sent out a climate control truck to pick this car up. The only thing that went in this box was my car. And that's the last I seen or heard of it. I don't know where it's at. Wow. So it's in somebody's private collection, as far as I can gander. That's pretty I hope cool, it's still though. alive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. It's one of a kind. It's one that, you know, like I said, it's iconic that it's a Hot Wheel. It's 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 a, a great car if anybody sees it. And so I have no idea. I haven't seen it. I've been, you know, well, I figure one of these days somewhere I'll run across it. I'll have to put out a call for it. If anyone knows where his car is, you know, let my heart know. <laughs> That's right. Like you said, it's in someone's collection, so it's got to still be out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll still be out there. Now, I don't know if you've seen pictures, Jeff, but he's actually got a car hanging from his wall. I don't know. I've oh, seen I that. That's uh, cool. No. Yeah. It's a dragster. Or what is it, Vaughn? Yeah, yeah, it's a dragster. I used to run a, a front-engine dragster, and that's Delta type. It's a replica. I ran it in the 80s, and my business got so busy I didn't have time, so I kind of parked it and then bounced around from garage to storage to the house, back to the shop, back and forth. I just never, I have a hard time getting rid of stuff. And one day I was, watch, I was watching TV in my living room and I said, I got to do something with this wall. And I happened to have the digger, the dragster in my garage. And I said, you know what? I think this thing will fit. So I kind of measured it out. I said, this thing will fit. So I took it for one last pass down the, down the street and all the neighbors ran out of their house. And I came back and took it apart in the garage. And at midnight, I drug it on on a furniture dolly through the front door and put it back together in my living room for the next couple of days and then hung it on the wall. <laughs> Wait, I thought you meant just the rails or the, or the, you got a no, whole, the whole car, whole the whole car. What kind of engine is it? <laughs> it's a, it's a 400 small block. It's got a blower on it. 671 GMC blower. It's <laughs> yeah. It's got an in and out box, you know, in gear, out of gear. It's, uh, yeah. it's hanging on the wall. I don't have a picture with me cause I'm using, I'm on my phone, but yeah, yeah you can look at it. You can find it. Uh, yeah, Jeff, yeah. What's your, what what's your it, best uh, pass in it? What's that? What's your best pass in it? Uh, well, this is what's really cool is because the first time I got it together, when I took off, I made my first pass, it was too light. I got the, I got halfway down the strip, and I couldn't steer the thing. I scared me to death because I couldn't steer it. <laughs> so I backed off, added some weight, added a foil to it. At that time, I picked up a sponsor, and he goes, look. The more times you can announce my name, the happier I am. I don't care if you win or lose. So then I'd get in the hot box and I'd line up a little crooked. Well, that would shoot me into the neighbor. So then I'd have to back off. So the announcer is just announcing his name like crazy. So then I'd get on the line, just a little crooked. And when I'd launch, I'd either launch to the wall or launch to the neighbor and I'd have to get off. So I usually got eliminated. I usually do about two or three passes and then I'm eliminated, but I had more fun because I'm sliding sideways, smoking the tires. I'm just, the guy's getting his name announced and he's as happy as can be. <laughs> and so are you, that's living the dream, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. cool. I had so much fun doing that because I got to play. And you know, with my sponsor, he was happy. His name got plastered all over. Cause you know, I pull up the line and all they talk about is, you know, how I can't handle it straight, how I can't make a pass. And he loved that. He just was getting all this marketing out of it. So it worked for him. Nice. So, Von High Rod travels probably more than more than you, Jeff. He travels Ooh. all over the place. I swear, he's everywhere across, even across different countries. I mean, yeah. that's you work hard, man, and you're everywhere. But uh, where were we going to be this weekend? I'm sure it was canceled. I'm sure uh, you're probably going to be somewhere. Well, last weekend I was supposed to be at, at Texas Motor Speedway for NASCAR. They booked me for NASCAR. It's going to go out there. It was their anniversary. O'Reilly was celebrating. I, I'm not even sure what year it was that they were having their O'Reilly 500, which got you know canceled and rebooked. So we'll see if we're going to head out there for the new bookings. Now the sad thing is shows are doubling up. So I've got shows right. that I'm being booked on that are doubling up. So it's going to be a little bit difficult the, towards the end of the year because of this. So we'll see how this right. all pans out. And, you know, we've got to stay, you know, car guy strong because we're basically all in this together. And I can't encourage enough of people out there, you know, these little mom and pop shops, these little hot rod shops that are out there, you know, wrenching on cars, you know, 
really support them. Even if they go just change your oil, please run out there, support them. You know, order a t-shirt from them, order, you know, car wax from these guys because that's their income. This is what their passion is, what they do. So, you know, support your local business, your local hot rod shop, whatever it is, please, please go out there and support these guys because it's, it's their livelihood. This is what we do. We have, you know, petrol running in our veins and we as artists or as car builders, designers, we don't have a plan B. This is our passion. This is our dream. And this is what we love to do. So Please, you yeah. local guys, support your local guys. Keep them alive. Definitely. Very well, you met, uh, you met my buddy Ed Beard Jr. on the stage at SEMA. He's the other yes. artist that came up with you. Uh, and I think they canceled two of his four shows he goes to every year, and that's where he makes his money. So, you know, it's been a, he's been hard hit, uh, kind of probably like a lot of other artists, stuff like that. So right. it's affecting everyone, man, just everyone, yeah. including myself. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, it definitely is. And, and like I said, we just got to stay focused. You know, God is still in control of this and we know the outcome and we know that we'll get through this. But this is a time that we need to pull together. We need to just like in World War Two, when the guys came back, you know, there wasn't enough food. There wasn't enough stuff for these guys. So everybody planted gardens in their front yards. All the neighbors, everybody worked together to feed our men. And it's the same thing. We got to, you know, reach out and help our neighbors. You know, we help them from a distance and that's OK. But we, yeah. you know, throw the, the roll of toilet paper or the paper towel, throw it in a bag to your neighbor if they need it. Just, you know, be there for each other because that's that's right. how we'll get through. Yeah. Right. I agree totally. And Jeff, I know he, he's missing some stuff too. You're missing good guys. Uh, where are you missing? Yeah, the first four yeah. good they, guy shows were canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. So, yeah, yeah. been a tough that's one. We yeah, don't we even know. You know, Back to the 50s is coming up. You know, that's in June. Right. Well, I already got a show that's already canceled in June, middle of June already. So I don't oh. know. You know, let's hope it doesn't go that long, but we'll see what I happens. Agree. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I'm so. just waiting to hear about the LS Fest West in Vegas. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, even, you know, Viva, Viva Las Vegas got canceled. I was supposed yes. to be in Australia. I was supposed to be in Australia at Grease Fest coming up, and it got canceled. Well, it got postponed. I shouldn't say canceled. They moved that yeah. down to September. But yeah, everything's is that the show yeah. where uh, it has to be a specific 50s era car? For Viva me? Las Vegas? No, the, the, the Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, that's what, that's what they specialize in. I'm, sure, I'm not sure the years because I know there's a lot of caddies and Chryslers that go out there in the 60s. So I don't know if they have a cap on it. That I'm not sure. I'm – I'm guessing probably like 69 on down. That's a guess. I'm not really sure. But I, but it's just the majority. Because I've got a 55 Chevy, and I think that I can't go. Even with, with right. my small block, I had a small block in before. Now I've got an LS in it. Um, but right. I heard that it, it has to be a legit, like a 265 or a flathead. It's got to be that kind of old school. Well, I think it's it's more period correct. You can have a, okay. a small block in it, but I think it's got to look period correct. I think that's what they're oh, trying okay. to capitalize in because – they're limited on their parking spot. Their parking spot is only limited to so many cars, so they can kind of pick and choose that so many people want to come. So they're oh, trying they're to good. make it very nostalgic for the look that they want, for the bands that come out, the people, and stuff like that. Yeah. When does that usually happen, or when was that? That's over Easter weekend. Yeah, okay. it's already been canceled, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. I saw that. I put that in the website right away when I saw it. Correct. Yeah, yeah and I, we just recently um, – rescheduled the Benedict Castle Concourse. You know, that was yeah. due the end of April, so we just rescheduled that one. Do you guys have the new flyer for it yet? I know Not you're involved yet, with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't done a flyer yet. We'll be coming public with that pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, I've worked uh, worked with that since day one, man, that yeah. show. Yeah. So. That's uh, a great show. It's doing, it's doing yeah. really good. It's it's a tough one on Teen Challenge because it's we raise money for Teen Challenge and now they're out all that money that we raise and you know it's a hundred percent free to the the students or the the kids that come there for their program so they're out a lot of cash so we're really encouraging people to you know make a personal donation to them whether it's ten dollars whether it's a hundred dollars it'll it'll still help the kids out right definitely and that's uh, under Nicole McGuire's name too. Um, you know, that sad situation there. I did see the, watch the whole funeral. I saw your speech, which, man, you're making me cry, you know. Uh, watch, watch the whole thing. Um, yeah. So uh, I didn't get to see Barry this year at SEMA when I was there, but I would have probably 
walked up and gave him a hug. But uh, right. Barry is so nice. Barry is a great guy. So very yeah, sad. But keep it going, man. Keep it. Just keep yeah. it going in her name. That's what I say. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I guess you're going to be joining us tomorrow night, hopefully. That's going to yeah, be kind of a, a crazier tomorrow thing. Tomorrow night, but... I'll find a different background so you guys can see something different. <laughs> Hey, I want to see the dragster. Yeah. You want to see the dragster, yep. huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we we'll got uh, we'll do... people joining us. I'm going to have to do like a – try to do a scheduled thing. Try sure. to – so it's not super crazy, but maybe get crazy at the end because everyone's going to try to yeah. talk, you know. So we'll have yeah, to no try problem. to do it in some kind of an order, but we'll see how that works. <laughs> oh, that will be fun. It's organized mm -hmm. chaos. We're, we're the best at that. Right, right, and yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna make myself have a heart attack overnight. I think trying to arrange it all, but we'll get it straightened out. Jeff had yeah, some good ideas know. for me, like how she, yes. how we should do this. So, yeah. uh, so what, 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 free see, for all. Yeah, well, I don't. We don't want it to be. We we don't want everyone talking over each other, you know, because people don't want right. to watch that. So let's hope hope we can work it out in some. Yeah. Some way I'm gonna send an email out later, either tonight or tomorrow morning, but uh, with our schedule. <laughs> so, uh, so how many shows would you say you go to every year? I mean, you probably go to 25 shows, or probably even more I than do, that. Yeah, I do weekend. three to I do three to four a month. Wow! And I'm yeah. I'm booked all the way till the third Saturday in December, and then once that show's over, I'm off for about two and a half weeks, and then. First weekend in January, I, it starts back up again. But wow. this being the, the year of the quarantine, I'm I've been off for three weeks and probably till May. It looks like for right now, middle of May. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I'm I'm hoping the doctors are wrong, but they think there'll be another seasonal, possibly this fall. You know, and right. we run into SEMA and everything else. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, and it's just, it's just, you know, like what I always say, I just fill up on the, the one shot, you know, and it keeps me keeps me clear. A little bit of locker thinner, and we're good. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. I, got, I got the thing back here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's the little skateboard I wanted to see about with your signature on it. That's right. Oh, that's right. So, I remember that. So yeah, that was, that that. was pretty cool. You know, I follow what you do, you know, and then the question was, what happened today to Von Hot Rod? And I'm like, it's right. his birthday. And I it's knew right. it right away because I, yeah. I literally every keep up year, with it. Every year at SEMA, it's my birthday. It just bounces around different days. So we always do something special. And there's always a giveaway. You know, I give away. I think last year at SEMA, we did eight art pieces at SEMA. And every year we do something like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Always, uh, just, always follow me. Always watch because you never know what we're gonna give away. And it's you know the I think the the least amount is a couple hundred. The most amount was eight hundred. I gave an eight hundred dollar art piece away. It was a, one of the laughs like wow. I showed you. Like that. Yeah. yeah. I, always <laughs> I was worried it was gonna fit my suitcase. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> But then if I want an electric guitar, I'm thinking, how would I get that on the plane? But right. it probably costs right. a little extra. <laughs> it's but, it's uh, well worth it. Yeah, SEMA is a great time. I love going yes. there. And I've seen you a couple yes. times there now. Uh, I didn't get to talk to you a lot. I was with Nelson. We, we stopped and talked right. for about a couple, like uh, 30 seconds. But uh, yeah, we got we got the selfie and got it posted. And that was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. SEMA, that was my... 31st SEMA show that I've been to. Wow. wow. And where, yeah, do, you, where do you set up camp at SEMA? I do appearances at different areas. Um, okay. it, gotcha. Usually it's my sponsors, Headman Header, Coco Tires, Wheel Ventique, the Shell Stage, people that, you know, support me. And I usually do appearances at their, their booths there, depending on what they book, anywhere from, you know, three hours to an hour. And then we do giveaways throughout every day. We Sometimes we do two giveaways a day. It all depends on the appearances. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. SEMA's been a lot of fun. I remember I was a punk kid with this little hot rod shop that I just opened up, going to SEMA. And, you know, back then there was – internet didn't exist. It was all magazine and catalog sales. So 
I'm king in my neighborhood because all the hot rod guys know me. They all hang out there. So, you know, you get a little puffed up. You go to SEMA and nobody knew me. Nobody knew anything about my hot rod shop. I was this punk kid trying to break into an adult industry. And it pretty much set me straight. It was pretty awesome. I, I will never forget that. Never forget the adults that actually did help me out in business and, you know, gave me that break that I was looking for. And by the following year, things already had changed. SEMA did, it did really good for me. Right. Yeah, it's a fantastic that's, it, place. It's, yeah, it's a great place to network and meet people. And oh, so absolutely. many people want to help each other. It's so cool. Yeah. I and, and, now, and now with social media, it's just taking it to a level that you can't even keep up with. It's It's been a blast. It's been so much fun. I was there at yeah. SEMA when they were hurting for spots. It was so small. And then SEMA got really big. And then it started getting outside. And, you know, Monday, that's things going on on Monday now. So it's pretty cool. Right, right. Well, like you said a little bit ago about the the magazines, your card been in some magazines. Now that yeah. nineteen of the automotive magazines have been canceled, yeah. I mean, I mean, what what do you say anymore? You can't. You, you've lost a lot of that cachet as to yeah. my my car's been on Instagram. Well, big fucking no offense, but big big deal. <laughs> right? and not my car's on Instagram. You know what I mean? It's like to get your car <laughs> in Hot Rod magazine or Car Craft or yeah. Super Chevy. It's yeah. I mean, it's that's something. Yeah, and you know when you when you're growing up as a kid, you're flipping the pages on you know hot rod riding custom whatever. You know yeah. my dream was someday I want to build that that car to be on the magazine, to be in rod and custom or street rod or yeah. four wheel drive, whatever it was. And I remember the first time I got um, I got my truck actually my four by truck into off road magazine. Oh man, I could not. You know, I was just happy for months of that. You know, hey, hey, that's hey, you, you see my magazine? You know, yeah. That's it. And look at this. This is funny. I'm going to bend down for a second. So one shot did a a a mag. It's a magazine. They did an article about me, and they were talking about how to take care of your brush. And it says, "Let's talk hair care. You wouldn't put uh, lacquer thinner in your hair, so neither does Von Hot Rod." So you can see. <laughs> there you that's go. All talking about hair care. It's, it's, it's super <laughs> funny. You know, how you're not supposed to put hair, you know, lacquer thinner in your hair, and you're not supposed to take care of your brushes that way. It's talking about brush conditioner because it's actually hair. So I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> they called me on that. Hey, we want to do something. I go, yeah, what do you need? And they said, well, we're going to make fun of you. And I said, I'm all in. I'm all in, whatever you got. So. Good for you. So what, one good. thing, one thing I was going to say, I'm sorry. One thing I was going to say is uh, I always like inspirational stories and stuff like that. And I know that you went to school and same thing happened to my buddy, Ed Beer Jr. Uh, his teacher said, you know, you're pretty much his artwork was garbage, junk. Uh, you're never going to be able to do anything in life, right. blah, blah, blah. And something like that, you were saying something like that happened to you too? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I, I was an average student in high school, and I was a kid always drawing on the desk and getting in trouble and stuff like that. So right out of high school, I went into college, and the week I was there was great. I just, in the middle of class, I got up and said, this is going to take way too long. Do you understand? i got to be retired at a certain age. I'm out of here. The instructor said, you need your education. You'll never amount to anything. You're going to become a loser like everybody else. You know, we had a little tip there, and I said, you watch me. You watch what's going to happen to me. I'm going to work my tail end off. And I walked out of class. And, you know, you can hear the instructor in the background telling the kids, don't be that guy. Stay in school. Yo, and it's just resonating in my ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's just you work hard at it. We live in an amazing country that we can pretty much do anything if we've got the drive and the passion. And now I, I taught at that very university that I got kicked out of. And the crazy thing is, is everybody wants to know how to do it. And I said, you're going to hate my answer. And the answer is volunteer for your local industry that you want to break into because handing them a resume or a piece of paper doesn't give a personality. I can teach you anything. I can teach you all the secrets on what to do, how to do pinstripe or build a hot rod, but I can't teach you the drive or the passion. That has to be in you. You've got to be willing to work 10, 15-hour days and sometimes for free, for no pay because it's your passion. It's your drive. And if you've got that kind of drive, you can make it. If you're after the dollar, you're going to chase a dollar the rest of your life. You've got to understand that volunteer for these local businesses. Show them who you are. Give them a personality. They're going to give you the worst job ever. They're going to have you pull weeds, clean the bathroom, because they're going to test you. What kind of attitude do you have? What What are you going to do when you're, you know, when you don't have the 
the great name or the name on Instagram or Facebook where you have to struggle for it. You've got to earn that, earn that, you know, face. My best employees were the kids I used to skateboard around my shop. I used to skate. So I built a half pipe inside my shop and I'd skate it on, you know, when I, when I wasn't busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, anyway. so the kids found out it was there. So they'd hang out because they wanted to skate the ramp. Well, you got about, you know, half a dozen kids hanging out there. And I said, you know what, I'm going to put these, I used to chase them and I said, I'm going to put them to work. You know, I said to them, okay, I want all these weeds picked up. I want my sidewalk swept or whatever the case may be. So I'd walk out there, there'd be eight kids. And then I'd go check on them. And in, in a couple hours, there'd be two, sometimes one left. Those are the guys that I'd let skate the ramp. Every time, every day, same thing. Every week and the same thing, the same two. So I started bringing them in. Hey, help me change this tire. Hey, help me put this rubber seal on this door. Hey, help me put the spark plugs in. And I could see the passion in these guys' eyes. So I started paying them on weekends and then started hiring them and they became my best employees. There are two of them are still in the industry. One of them has a hot rod shop. He builds, he builds nostalgia rods. The other guy works for SEMA. But you just nice. never know who these guys are. Somebody gave me a break, same thing. Give a kid a break. You know, I always say, take a kid to a car show, give him a ride in your car, let him know what it feels like to put the $50 bill on the dash and you launch and him try and reach it. There's nothing like that. These kids have got to experience it. They've got to understand that automobiles are not for transportation. They're not to Uber in and out. They are for collecting. They are for, you know, getting that second wheel chirp and second gear, you know, drifting around the corner. That's what it's driving. Yeah, yes, that's right. driving, that's driving. That's I hope your tail dragger isn't locked yeah. away in someone's vault. I hope that it actually gets to live and breathe and drive. Yeah. and. That's Absolutely. my favorite. Yeah, right. take a kid right. to a car show, man. Yeah, yeah I, I bring my five-year-old. I bring yeah. my five-year-old, and he knows he's five, and he knows he can't touch anyone's car. I mean, he's yeah. learned he can't touch it. Of course, right. Daddy would get a little mad if he did. So, <laughs> but yeah. uh, he he it. knows, and he's five. You know, you see all these other kids. You go to these car shows. Uh, people climbing all over the cars and just unbelievable. Oh. But yeah, yeah, they let their kids it's, it's, just walk all over them. They don't know any different, you know? Yeah, it's just respect. They just need to teach them respect. That's the thing is respect others, you know, property. And, and instead of getting mad at them, explain why, you know, their little rock on their shoe will scratch your running boards and your fingernail will scratch the car. And it's just education. That's, that's basically what it is. I'd rather right. take the time with the kid and explain to it than yell at the guy saying, get out of here because – I don't want to scare him away. I'm going to pull him in. I want to get him to experience why I don't want my car scratched or why I don't want you to spill your soda on my car. I'd rather explain that to him and take the time. That's I'm that guy. You know, if he wants to experience it and touch it, yeah, I will let him touch it. But in the proper way, does he want to get in the inside of it and see what it's like? Yeah, I'll let him in. But the proper way, you know, let's dust your shoes off. Let's put a rag on the running board. Let's hop on in. And there's a right and wrong way of doing it. And it's just education. But spending the time of explaining to him why. You know, makes a See, difference. I, I'm, I'm that guy. Von, Von Hotrod yeah. is teaching me not to go off on kids, but well, my little ones. But yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good, though. Yeah, because, that's good advice. Well, you, you just never know because you don't know if that kid's going to just click with him and he's going to be the next George Barrows, Chip Foose, you know, whatever, whoever you look up to. You, you just don't know that because somebody did that to me. Obviously, it was my father that did it. My father's the one that inspired me. And I give all the credit to him of what what he taught me. He taught me how to respect it and what's it about. Yeah, there are fun times to go off-roading and roll a Jeep. That's absolutely right. There are times to do that. There are times to, to race on a drag strip, you know, just do a burnout the whole strip. There are times to do that, have fun and play. But there are also times to be serious about it and respect, you know, your, your co-driver, respect the car next to you. And, again, it's just education, just letting them know grabbing a kid and taking them for a ride because you could change their, their heart and mind about it. So I was going to ask, one question I was going to ask is, yeah. uh, did you know George Barris, hang out at his shop? or? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All these yeah. guys, you know, social media has put us all in contact with each other. But all these guys, Dick Dean, George Barris, Ed Roth, um, you know, Jimmy Shine, all these guys are local. So we all, we've all known each other for years. Boyd Connington was one of my best customers and we've just known each other for years. You know, there's nothing like, like Ed Roth, a good example. Ed Roth never taught me anything about pinstriping, but to sit down and, and have dinner with him and talk about marketing skills on how to take a product from concept in your head to a shelf 
amazing stuff. My marketing skills come from Ed Roth. That's where I learned everything, how to market myself and market my art or my business was from Ed Roth. Gene Winfield sitting with Gene and getting the idea of not trying to be so, you know, stern and that education is key. Learn from the younger kids. Modern technology, you're supposed to bring it in and adapt it to what you have. Sitting down with Dick Dean and and listening to the stories on on how to chop a Merc, uh, you know, 50 years ago and how to chop a Merc nowadays and stuff like that you can't replace. These are dinners and lunches that, you know, they go down in history for me because I can't replace those conversations. That's, yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's, uh, boy, I'd love to have some of that company. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I think Ed Roth's son might live up here. I'm not sure. Was Ed Roth, I don't know if he lived in Minnesota. I know he had some connections up here, but um, I know that he was at a show my friend puts on. He's actually going to be on tomorrow night. Uh, it's, he's part of the club, but uh, Ed Roth was one of the guys at his show. Uh, nice. So he'll, he might have to tell a little bit of the story of how he met him and then his son, yeah. stuff like that. So he can tell you all about that. And he also had Chip Foos before Chip Foos' name really exploded. Right. It was right yes. before he went on TV on Overhaul. He is at their uh, show. Um, so yeah. right before that all happened. So he can tell you a little bit about that. So That's it might awesome. be an interesting night tomorrow night, I hope. I think so. <laughs> so. I think so. You got any other questions, Jeff? You're taking I'm it all it. in. He's yeah, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, and see, that's, that's the crazy thing is because is you see uh, my life on social media, and as I say, there's more to it than what you see on social media. There's, you know, I've been in this industry my whole life. I started, gosh, as far as I can remember, five, six years old, I was racing uh, motorcycles at the age of six, racing, um, you know, motocross back then. And I was called Pee Wees. It doesn't call that now, but... Yeah, I've been around it my whole life. I know nothing yeah. else. Um, I just grew up, you know, on Saturdays working on cars with dad and working on motorcycles and trying to kickstart his shovel head and, you know, just stuff like that. That was that was the norm. I remember my slide was a 55 gasser. When dad would pull the motor out, I climbed through the firewall up and up on, on top of the roof, slide down the back window, down the trunk. That was just my playground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you're living a fun life. I can tell you that. And, uh, and you got to post a picture of this 55 gas, or when you find a yeah. picture, post a 55 gas oh, on your uh, Insta. Yeah, I don't think that exists. I know. I think I might have a picture of Dad's um, 55 Pontiac. He had this 55 Pontiac fuel injected that um, we used to street race with it, traffic light to traffic light. And I was super young, but I do remember my biggest thrill was standing on the bench seat. And when he would launch, I would end up in the back seat, and I thought that was the funnest thing ever. I just, you know, that would never go off today. But I still remember that. Yeah, he used to cruise the local boulevard and race street light to street light. By the time you hit second, you've already got to let go because the next traffic light comes up. But right, yeah, what was, was the local amazing. boulevard? Um, I can't tell you that because then you'll find my location. Just downtown. It was downtown, the local boulevard. We was right by. <laughs> Right by the old movie theater that had the marquee with all the lights going on in. Yeah, it was, it was a nice. lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. have you ever been to uh, the Hot Rod Power Tour? Uh, I, did when it, I did when it was in my local city. It came here a few years ago, and I came to it. Yeah, okay. I've never traveled with it because I don't have the time. I can't take that right, much time right. following because usually I'm seven, I seven days. Like it's uh, yeah. the most wonderful time my, of the year. My bucket <laughs> list. Is I, my bucket list is I want to do the great race. Ah, oh, that'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, yeah there was a yeah. friend of mine. Martin has got this. Uh, oh, geez, uh, uh, a Mercury Zephyr, the station wagon. It's his brown uh, wagon. It looks like forge line wheels. But he got it. It took two months to get the thing ready for shipping. It's off to Tasmania to do the. Wow. Uh, the Great Tasmanian Race? What uh, is that? It's like wow. the, it's a thousand mile race that they do. Have you seen Love the Beast? The, yeah. It's a, oh, you guys haven't seen it? Oh, man. I forget. Uh, oh, man. Hang on. Um, anyway, <laughs> but it's been canceled because of this whole, oh, this whole wow. scare, which is sad. But yeah. Hang on. What's the race? Tasmania. Love the Beast. 
Did that? I think the Great Race either started at Back to the Fifties or ended. I can't remember which one. Yeah, uh, one year it did. Years. I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it ended there. Yeah. 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 The actor Eric Bana. Oh. He's Australian, and it's about his this car that he's had ever since high school, and he's kind of re it's gone through some some different stages, and finally he converts it into a full on ten tenths race car. Wow. And he brings his mom and dad out to this thing, and it's uh, it's this whole thing, uh, but it's called Love Love the Beast, and uh, at there it is. Okay, uh, look at that. I gotta see it. Love the Beast. You gotta I see to it. It's, it's, uh, it made me really admire him. He was in Black Hawk Down. You'll know him when you see him. Mm -hmm. um, okay. He beats the shit out of this car and actually puts <laughs> it into a tree. Oh, nice. So, and then yeah. it's like part of him is, do, do I repair the car and? He goes see this 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 doctor. It's like you have to repair the car. The car is a part of you. If you don't, you'll feel yeah. guilty the rest of your life. So it's like it's true. It's <laughs> anyways. You gotta check it out. That's awesome. I gotta look for it. Yeah, I love the beast. All right. Nice. I got I got time now, so I'll look for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all have a little more time yeah. somehow. <laughs> well, we'll see you here tomorrow, right? Yeah, we're, we're yeah. gonna hook up tomorrow night. And right. uh, we're going to have a bunch of TV people, a bunch of media people. It's just going right. to be interesting. I think it will be interesting. Yeah, that'll be, so. be a lot of fun. And we got and a couple fans the, mixed in. <laughs> yeah, where can the folks who are watching out now find your stuff? Is it uh, VonHotRod.com? Is it on Instagram, VonHotRod? Yeah. yeah, you can just go to Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Everything is at VonHotRod. And if you want to go to the website, you can just go to VonHotRodShop.com. You can check nice. out the merchandise, the stuff we make, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, follow well, us on like Instagram. Yep, see my adventures. I just posted a video a couple of days ago about what, what we're going through for fun. Just kind of a little bit what we're doing, talk, talking about taking kids to car shows and stuff. And So now you, know, you have to, uh, are you waiting to reschedule your pinstriping class until this whole mass hysteria is over with? Or uh, when oh, you absolutely. This? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a, a couple of them coming up. We've rescheduled them, and yeah, they're filling up fast. So if you guys want to do the pinch driving class, just message me, and we'll get it. Where are they? We got some in the future. I'm sorry. Where, where uh, are they held at? I've got I got one in Australia coming up, and I got one in yeah. Redlands, California, coming up. <laughs> so, Wait, Redlands? Um, is that like San Francisco? No, that's on Southern California. Oh, Redlands is SoCal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Redlands is SoCal. Excellent. So, yeah, well, did we I'm, just. We just I'm did one in you. I want to say when you reschedule, I'm going to sign up for that uh, that pinstriping yeah. class. My dad's an artist, and I got him uh, a set of brushes some years ago, and in, in uh, like three bottles or, or cans of that little the, the one yeah, set yeah. paint. Yeah. Yep. So what the hell? Perfect. Yeah. That'd perfect. Cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah that'd it's be a lot. We have so much fun in these classes. It's a three hour class, and they're a blast. And I keep them small so I can do a lot of one on one. And you learn a lot of secrets that I don't share with the public, and it's it's a lot of fun. We have a blast every time we do it. We just did one in Birmingham right before all this started, and the students were they had a blast. They they were happy they booked the class because I always ask them, was it worth it? You know, was it worth your ten bucks? I'm, I'm kidding, it's not ten bucks, but was it worth it to go? And everybody was happy. So what what do they so practice fun. on? Uh, we I just give them a medal, you know, uh, basically like a no parking sign. It's yeah. about that size, and so we practice on that. You, you you can walk in with nothing, no knowledge whatsoever. By the time you're done, like you'll learn how to stretch. You get, really? you'll have all your supplies, everything you need when you walk out. So oh, that's nice, badass. Okay, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then, you're of course, it's up to you to practice and develop it. You should nice. do it, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, man, that'll be fun. What the you're hell? You're a little closer than me, but I'm not. I can't go to Australia. I'll tell you, that's a little too far. <laughs> This one's, this one's pretty funny. I do car shows on a cruise ship, and I did yeah. a pinch riding class on a car on a cruise ship. We and, had uh, a blast. Yeah. Who's the other, all, who's the other person who goes on that? It it's was someone that great. you know, Jeff. I think someone you know, Jeff, that goes on that cruise. Who's the other uh, celebrity with you? Uh, well, Tim this Strange. year, last last year we had Aaron Hagar and Tim, Tim Strange. Tim Strange. There you go. That's so funny. Jeff knows yeah. him. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I did see about that ship. I actually yeah. shared that on my uh, my uh, car show site. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah I know you were part of a, it. Temp Street. Yeah. yeah. 
Those are That's fun. Great. Once you know everything gets back going, we'll probably book another cruise ship in probably 2022. But they they are fun. They are a lot of blast. They're a lot of fun. Everybody that's on there is you know a car guy or car girl, and we just have a lot of fun. I am up from seven in the morning till midnight every day. Wow. Holy yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a blast. I, I drag my wife from one end of the cruise ship to the next because we we host it, so we're always we're always super busy. So it's a lot of fun. That's the only fun. time I don't have everybody is when we dock. Wow. You just reminded me a friend of mine. Who, uh, anyways, he's a car guy. A friend of mine went yeah. on one of these weekend cruises with his son and the son's wife. And oh, uh, no. his son was talking shit to his dad. So the dad gets the, the $50 all you can drink for every day of the And they got to get all they can drink. They got alcohol poisoning. They were sick for a week. <laughs> that was, that was, <laughs> they got their money's worth. They got their yeah, money's worth. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Important. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll sign off. We'll uh, see you tomorrow night. Should yes. be interesting. And uh, yeah. thank you so much for doing this. I really you're appreciate welcome. it. And uh, you're like I called you a legend, man. You're a legend. So uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. It was very kind. Very yeah. kind. All yeah. right. We'll see you guys tomorrow, right? All right. Yeah. Take care, Vaughn. We'll see you next time. All right. See you tomorrow. See you, thank you, Vaughn. Thanks, Bye. Adios. All right. Bye. Bye.